Hi, everyone. Just coming live to you. I hope everyone is doing well. It is it is Wednesday uh, in the Northeast. I'm coming live to you because many of you know that I have been following uh, this case with uh, Gabby and Brian Laundry, Gabby Petito. And uh, news had just come in that uh, the, with the autopsy, which the autopsy is not completely finished. So we're unable to find out exactly how, not that it matters at this point, but it, uh, it has been concluded that through the autopsy that uh, Gabby Petito was uh, the cause of her death was a homicide. And the reason why I'm coming live is because I have been following this case from the very beginning. I have studied, reviewed forward and backward the entire, um, it's about an hour and 17 minutes and nine seconds to be exact of the video cam from the, from when they were pulled over in Utah. Just studying, just watching that video cam and then going back and then going forward and back the entire incident and the entire way that it was handled was incomprehensible. For those of you that know uh, uh, my past, uh, I don't like to use the word survivor. I don't like to use the word victim, but I'm going to use it. I was a domestic violence victim and survivor. And because my language doesn't really go there and, you know, I have thrived in spite of it, not everyone does. But because I have thrived in spite of it, uh, you can rest assured that I will have my hands all over helping other people like Gabby not become a statistic. First of all, first of all, what, what really makes me crazy is why the authorities uh, that pulled her over had zero education and knowledge and insight on how to identify potential domestic violence within an intimate relationship. And it almost makes my stomach turn. Not only that, when before we even saw that video cam, we meaning us who are looking at major media, just looking at the little things, uh, just the, the articles and the quick the, the news, just the, the news that was coming out here and there and little little blurbs here and there, I knew immediately the first clue, you guys, the first clue is that Gabby Petito, for whatever reason that people may give you, she moved down to Florida with him, away from her family and friends and everyone that she knows. So uh, 101 domestic abuse, it starts with isolation. That was my first clue. Oh, so now he's isolating her. That's the first clue, right? She befriends one person that, uh, I believe it was Davis, I think Rose Davis, I don't remember the first name, who we also see an article where she, uh, he, someone reported statements from her saying that she believed that she was the only friend that she had made down there in Florida, not because she couldn't make friends, but because Brian Laundry uh, was jealous of her having any friends and jealous of, of any time that she would be spending not with him. That's number two, domestic abuse, domestic violence. Number two clue controlling where you go, what you do. Uh, there were oh, so many statements. Let's go to the video cam, though. How about the video cam 
Uh, oh, no, no. How about the call to 911 before the video came? How about the call to 911 where someone in Florida, a spectator called into 911 and said that they were witnessing at a specific corner Brian Laundry slapping Gabby Petito. And if any of you have listened to that tape, that's inconceivable as well. It was, there, there were no details asked by the responding officer. Probably nothing was done about it, right? Now let's fast forward. Now, Gabby uh, is going trekking across country. What did she do? She quit her job. She's a nutritionist. I believe she went to school for nutrition. She's a nutritionist. This is what she states. And she quit her job to trek across country with her quote unquote fiance. And she's starting a blog with, him. okay. Clue number three, coercion, intimidation, isolation. So now, now she's, now she's going across country And it's all about, it's all about them, isn't it? So now we don't really hear too much. They stop the search. They start the search. The mom's suspicious. All of everything that's going on within that timeline. And then comes out the video cam that blew my mind. It was the video cam that gave answers to everything. Once I saw that video cam, there was no turning back as far as my, uh, my knowing that this was definitely a domestic violence case and that they had really, really, they really screwed up by letting this go. And so I don't know if any of you have watched that video cam. It's about an hour and 17 minutes and nine seconds. I watched it from the beginning to the end, back, forward and back. I froze, I paused, I listened, I rewound. And let me just tell you, from the very first moments when they got pulled over and the, uh, the, respond, the police officer went to the door to the side of the truck, he had Gabby come out. Clearly, Gabby was very, very upset, hysterically crying. She was very, very upset and shaken. He takes her aside away from Brian that's in the van. And it's a picture of a young girl, pack of nerves. She couldn't even stand. And she was kind of buckling over uh, in a state of anxiety, confusion, and the first thing that came out of her mouth was self-blame. Clue number four, domestic violence. Clue number four. So not so much that she was protecting him, but that she has, through however many years that she's been with him, whether it's one year, two year, three year, I don't actually know that. I know it was... I think it was since they're in high school. She's been programmed to apologizing, believing that she has issues, believing that she's the cause. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That is classic domestic violence signs. The officer didn't even see it. Didn't even see it. And it gets worse. If you have time, stay on this live because I have things to say about this. 
Then he puts her kindly. He 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 puts her in the police back of the police car. Said, you're not in trouble or anything. Why don't you stay in here where it's air conditioned? And I'm going to go talk to him. He never asked her after she said to him, we've been fighting all morning. I don't know. It's been a really bad day as she's buckling over. He never once looked at her in the eye. Away from Brian, who is in the truck. He never once looked her in the eye and said, is this the first time this has happened? Never once. He never thought to ask her, did he hit you? Is he hitting you? How long has this been going on? Not once. He just puts her in the truck. Then he goes over back to the truck, or to the to the to the the van, and asks him to come out of the car. Now you see a skinny, uh, nervous young man standing there. Oh, sorry, officer. Oh, Oh, you know, oh, was I was I going into the curb? Was you know, I didn't mean to, oh, was I speeding up? He was all over the policeman like he was the most apologetic person in the world. And then he proceeds to act very caring about the very person that he'd been abusing and driving absolutely nuts. And I see all of this while he's talking. I see his body language. I could see his his hands moving down by his sides. I could see him, his body language here. And his body language said nothing less than, oh, my God, I hope she's not talking in the back of that truck. And because he's calculated and because he has things to hide and because he suddenly lost temporary control of her while she was in the back of the police car, he starts with his story. Now, oddly, his story matched with her story. But you know why? Because her story was that, oh, he he made me upset. So, you know, and then when I saw the police, you know, when I saw the lights, I, you know, I hit his arm and that's why he swerved into the curb. And it was all her blaming herself. So why the hell wouldn't his story match her story? Do you think that he's going to blame her for anything? Uh, Himself for anything? Of course not. But what he was really clever at doing was telling the officer how... um, how much anxiety she has and that, uh, you know, she has OCD and he has a condition as well. And they both have this condition. And then you don't hear what they have in the, in the video cam is silent. And then it comes, it c- continues to go on. And one thing led to another. And what was really disgusting disgusting is not even a harsh enough word was that the police officer was standing there outside while, while the girl who's now deceased, who's now been killed was sitting in the back of the police car. The officer 
was now almost buddying up like the boys team. I I know, I know, I know. I I'm married for five years. Yeah, I I know. Sometimes it can get crazy, and now you're spending time together, going across country, and I know, I get it, and and almost like. Well, here's the deal. Domestic violence, clue number five, minimizing. Now he's, now they're minimizing, including the policeman, the height of her anxiety. Like she's a crazy person. Like she is unable to behave in a social environment like she doesn't have her act together right one thing leads to another i'm i'm fast forwarding a lot cuz it's an hour and 20 17 minutes this this video cam I'm just giving you the highlights of where all the clues are were for domestic violence that one two three four police officers on the side of the road did not take heed and do the right thing. So now we're up to five clues, right? Five. Then uh, he goes back to the girl, to Gabby in the car. And he says, you know, that, that he had, that Brian has scratches here on the face and he said they were from you. And she said, you know, um, you know, I scratched his face, you know, but we were arguing. But nobody mentioned what brought up the argument, what was going on exactly. I'm going to tell you what was going on. And you look at another Another call in to 911 out there, just previous to this, just previous to this, where a witness, two witnesses, saw again that van, Brian Laundry, fighting with her, slapping her, and locking her, what appeared to be him locking her out of the van and they were fighting over a phone and he proceeds to jump into, go into the window of the van as if he was locking her out and going to leave her there. By herself, probably no phone, probably no money, no water, domestic violence, Number, clue number six, intimidation, threat, economic abuse, financial abuse. Now he's taking everything away, which is a huge threat. What is this girl going to do in the middle of uh, the desert? Right. Don't know what 911 did with that call. We don't know. We only discovered that call when the FBI came on board. So, gee, oh, huh. I wonder now why Brian Laundrie had scratches on his face right on the side here, right here. W why didn't we ask how those came about? What, we had a fight and she's crazy and she scratched me? What? I mean, why didn't we ask? Why didn't we ask? For details, why didn't we ask the girl in private while you had her in the back of the police car? It gets worse. I'm not done. One thing leads to another, and they decide one of a few choices that they have. Either she gets arrested for domestic um, violence on her intimate partner. 
And then she can't then he's got to make sure that she gets to whatever the arraignment a couple of days later. Or. They just give her, I guess, what's called a citation or I don't I'm probably not getting this correct, but the gist of it is. The one officer left it up to the one that pulled him over and said, this is your decision. You can either do this, this or this by the law. You make the decision. And the decision he made was not to arrest Gabby. And to tell them, strongly, highly suggest that they separate for the night. And then they can intervene, you know, just kind of chill out, intervene, and, and good luck. Right? Now, the police officer, you know, maybe... Uh, he, he had maybe he had good intentions because he didn't want this young 22 year old to have any kind of, you know, record for domestic violence. I, I, you know, I'm sure it was well intended, but he didn't do his job. He didn't do his job and gets worse because while he was telling her this, what they decide, what he decided. And she was, you know, again, she was still crying. This girl. Was an overload of shaken nerves from head to toe. And he said, we're going to put him up in a hotel and we're going to give you the keys to the van so you can go off for your, by yourself. And I don't want the two of you to communicate at all until tomorrow morning. Right. And she's like, oh, she's OK. Now, her first thought was, uh, how far like how far is he going to be? And the police officer said, I can't tell you where he's going to be. But, you know, it's it's going to be she says, well, I just want to know, because now listen, she said, I never drive the van and I'm nervous. I wouldn't know like where to, you know, where I'm going and where to meet up. Right. So the police officer says, oh, no, no worries. We're just bringing him. We're going to be just right across town. And then he tells her where she can get a shower for about five or six dollars. Just to relax herself and clean up. And sends her on her way. But before he does. She's still sitting in the back seat. I wrote this down. I don't want to misquote. He, the officer says to her, this is what really made my stomach turn. The officer said to her, the officer led her. The officer said to her, want me to let him know that you love him and you'll see him tomorrow, stuff like that. I'm quoting. That's what he said to this girl that was in the back seat, shattered. Of course, she goes, uh, right? She's used to being the yes girl now, right? What he should have said, what he should have said was, I, I don't want to send you off driving in a van you never drive, in a land that you're unfamiliar with, by yourself, all shaken up. Do you want me to call your mom or your dad? Can I call someone for you from home to arrange for you to just get out of here for a while? He never did that. So 
So he sent her off. The young man, Brian, he's out there waiting. They take him aside. Brian asked them one thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's so apologetic. Oh, life is good for Brian, right? He said, uh, can I, can I take my backpack? They said, sure, get your backpack. They didn't look at the backpack. <laughs> what? Are you kidding? They didn't check the backpack. They didn't check the van. All they did was have him lift his shirt to make sure that he didn't have a weapon on him when they pulled him aside initially. Oh, but they took pictures of his little scratches and they took pictures of um, a cut he had on his finger that he said was from a wire. But, oh, we're going to take a picture of that anyway, sir, even though you said it's from a wire. <laughs> so then... There goes Gabby in the van, all 105 or 10 pounds of her, shaking from head to toe. Do you know what it's like to drive while you're shaking? Have any of you seen my live from like a month ago when I had experienced road rage and someone threw something at me in the car? And I was shaking and crying. Can you imagine if I felt like that and I was hysterical crying? I had to pull over for 25 minutes and collect myself. Could you imagine the level of anxiety and, and, and stress and fear in this poor girl? As the authorities tell her, go have a hot shower. We'll tell him, we're going to tell the guy that beats you that you love him and you're going to see him tomorrow. Way to go. High five to the authorities on that one. Mind you, I'm not downing the authorities. I'm downing the ones that took care of that incident because I was, I was blessed. I had the Suffolk County police. I'm going to give them a props here that saved my life. And they asked me all the right questions. They asked me all the right questions. Because they, they were aware. Because they cared. That's why this makes me crazy. I have more. Now, now Brian Laundry is getting escorted in the air conditioned police car with the policeman that made that that uh, incomprehensible decision. And now they're talking. They're talking small talk. And part of that small talk was again minimizing. I wrote this down too. I'm quoting. She seems a lot like my wife. That's what the policeman said to Brian Laundry. Ha ha ha. My wife has bad anxiety too. And my wife has bad anxiety and she takes medication for it. And then he goes on to say how, you know, it was the best thing we could have done for our marriage and so on and so forth. And as if we've already decided and judged that poor Brian is a victim of some anxious young girl 
with OCD. And so they decide to, they decide to escort him. They decide to escort him to a hotel room so he can get showered, chill out, eat and watch TV. And then he goes missing. She goes missing. He goes missing. Hmm. Do we really think that he's down in the those wetlands or wherever they're looking in Florida? Do we really think he's in there because his parents told him that's where he went? Come on. Come on. Really? I'm I mean I'm happy they're as of an hour or two ago they're sending divers and everything and I'm happy to hear that that's fine but um and I'm really happy the FBI is in it but I mean I'm not going to assume but I am going to say from experience Where he is, is a very well thought out, calculated plan and diverting all the searchers attention there would suggest to me that that's part of the plan while he runs even further somewhere else. I mean, I don't, it could be anywhere. Who knows? Uh, As far as I know, you can still take a boat from Florida to Cuba. As far as I know, you can still enter Cuba. Anything's possible. Right. So the reason why I wanted to come on and discuss all of this is to maybe help uh, prevent something like this from happening again. Uh, It's not going to happen with one conversation, obviously, but I will tell you that one in three adults, this doesn't even, this, this, this statistic doesn't even include children, sadly. One in three, is it one in three adults? Let me get let me get my statistics perfect for you. Let me get it since I'm all worked up. I don't want to misquote myself. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, okay. I'm going to pull it up. It's actually it's even on my website for goodness sake. Um but anyway, I the statistics we know, obviously, keep changing, but they're not changing for the better. They're changing, they're changing for the worse. They're getting, it's, it's, the numbers are, are growing. And, you know, I, if, if you don't understand or you're unaware of the the signs to domestic abuse or domestic violence, just so you know that it it, it affects all ages. By the way, all socio uh, economic uh, statuses, any sexual orientation, gender, race, religion, nationality. But in the U.S. alone, it's every three seconds. You guys every three seconds. That was the statistic I was looking for. An adult is assaulted or beaten every three seconds. And that's in the U.S. alone. U.S. alone. So if you're not really fully understanding the signs 
of domestic violence. I'm going to give them to you straight. If you need to get pen and paper, write them down or go on my website. I have a, a wheel on there. I have uh, all kinds of information, intimidation, coercion, threats, emotional abuse, physical abuse, physical violence. That doesn't just mean pushing someone physically or slapping or punching. That means taking things and breaking them. That means punching walls. That means taking things and throwing them. This is physical violence. This is domestic violence. Um, breaking a, a glass tabletop, all of that. Isolation. That's Isolation is a huge one. When someone is slowly but surely isolated from their friends, their family, they start fighting with their family, they, they stop seeing their friends, and it, this is all the master plan of an abuser. Minimizing, minimizing you by yourself in front of people, in front of your children, denying, denying that they did something, blaming, blaming you. You did this to yourself. This is your fault. I'm just giving you examples of verbiage. Using your children, using male privilege, and economic abuse, taking away um, uh spare money, taking away your credit card, locking you out of a house, locking you out of a, a, a van, locking you out of this, taking your, this, the key to your safe, closing your accounts, all of this, all of this, that's all domestic violence. If you experience even one of these things, just one, and I'm going to tell you, give it to you straight. If you're experiencing one of these things, trust me, you're experiencing a few of these things. You're just unaware of it right now. So if you, you or someone you know that you notice, please don't be silent. Please, please, please pry. Please don't be silent. Ask. You could be saving someone's life. And this is the toughest part of this conversation. Uh, and I'm a parent of, you know, the same age as, as this girl that, that was just killed. I'm a parent of a uh, of 23-year-old. Gabby's 22. Brian was 22. Brian Laundrie's 23. So same age. This is going to be tough to say, but I'm saying this to parents. If you think that your child is 18, 19, 20, 21, just because the law tells you that they're an adult, remind yourself to learn and understand uh, the law of love. And that law will tell you to teach love to your child all the way into those adult years so that they can learn this as well. They could learn self-love by learning from you. And if you think that you don't want to be, have too much authority over your child because they're 21 and over, and you feel that there's now these these new borders that are put around you as a parent because of clock time, I want you to think again.
and and I want you to ask questions. I want you to speak up if you have just an inkling of a suspicion of anything that's going on in your child's life that is not reflecting or expressing love and respect and honor. And I got to tell you, that may mean that may mean checking backpacks, checking dresser drawers, checking cars, checking underneath the car seats, checking in the consoles. And if you're highly suspicious, if your your young adult has is in a relationship that you're highly suspicious of, um, checking texts. Because at the risk of, of your young adult child getting angry at you, you can lose a child to to something that's immeasurably incomprehensive as as this oh, as this recent tragedy you know at at what point do you tell yourself as a parent that you, you don't want to get involved because dot, dot, dot? And at what risk? Right? You know, it's a funny story. Um, I think I was 50. Yeah, I turned 50. And um, I finally got my divorce papers in the mail. And uh, I remember mentioning it uh, in a celebrative, celebrative way to my mom. And, you know, we really had a moment together. Because what happens is we think that we had a moment together because, of course, you know, she blamed herself. <laughs> but truly, it really meant a lot to me to, um, to know that, you know, from this day moving forward, whatever, that, whatever year that was, that, you know, my, that, I have a family member or family members or friends that that would speak out if they saw something or detected something, um, you know, moving forward, and that they support that. Because many times what happens is a friend or even a neighbor will will notice something and the first thing they think is, oh, I don't, I don't want to pry. I'm telling you to pry. You know what that means? It means care. It's your responsibility when you see something to speak up. I'm not saying to prejudge it. I'm not saying to assume something. But when you see something suspicious, you speak up. When you see someone uh, that can't get a grip and you see all the signs that I explained here today, you see any of these signs. And if you don't see some of the signs, start asking questions because now I gave you enough information in this live. The isolation. Right? How many people do you think of that you, you, you talk to that, you know, oh, they're Suddenly your child or your friend or your best friend or your cousin or whoever is, is moving out of state far, far away where there's no family and no friends. 
because they're blissfully happy with someone. Just make sure that's the truth. Make sure that there's nothing underlying. Make sure that this person is aware of the potential isolation. It happens in little, little steps, you guys. Little steps. First, it's you don't have to work. And then it's that I'm jealous of my time with you. I just want you all to myself. Oh, it all sounds so romantic. It's not. It's power and control. It's calculated. And it's stepping in the direction of um, future abuse. So I uh, head over to my website, by the way, you guys, if you want to know, you know, anything more, um, even just about having a healthy relationship. I mean, goodness gracious, it took me it took me a couple of decades to learn how to do that. So if anyone's an expert at it, now I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you have any comments, I should actually put my glasses on and see if anyone has commented. I don't know if I can. Uh, let's see if I can um, get this over here. Do I even see? Huh. Hmm. I can't tell if there's any comments on here. Faye. Ah, uh, Faye, yeah. It's, it makes me angry too. It's, um, that's why I'm here, you know. I know. It's, it's horrible. But let's try and, help other people not be a statistic and if any of this if any of this or all of this resonated with you uh, i'd like to help you not be a statistic as well okay love you all and um you know maybe we should send a lot of uh uh healing and loving energy and light to the Petito family and loved ones. And um, you guys, as hard as this is to say, we have to send, uh, we have to be, uh, have a forgiving spirit. Doesn't mean that we forgive the acts that were, that were had, that were, that were, that happened, but it does mean that we're going to not let us stop us in our tracks and allow us to move forward to just um, help others in spite of all of this. And unless we have a forgiving heart, um, we can't really do that. Uh, I'll got, I got to be honest with you, um, and Faye, I, I see that face that you, that, that angry face that you're making. I can really relate. Um, I, yeah, I, I was really, I've been really angry at the way the whole incident was handled when they were pulled over in Utah. You know, look at me. I, I I have notes and notes. I, you know, um, but for all of today, I will not be angry, and I'm going to focus on on uh, the the harmonious outcome that a loving heart can bring, and that would be to just focus on uh, the petitos, focusing on their healing focusing on other people that maybe resonate with this um, and bringing them 
uh, to the light as well. Bye for now. Love you all.